Uh, we don't really find many people hold this philosophy, right? This sort of, mm. it's almost like you're a mix between, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're a mix between like a natural scientist and, and, and a scientist. Like you're in that, you, you kind of, you, you, you sit on that fence somewhat, you know, like you're, you're observing things in a, in a straightforward manner and not really falling into um, what we would call the myth of coffee. Yeah, like, I kind of try to understand, like try to understand it more like, yes, yeah, straightforward way. You know, testing, experimenting, and seeing what actually works, what doesn't, and and that kind of brings out the results. You know, and then you go from there. Yeah, yeah and right. I mean, the fact that you put that time in and you put it down in such a way that it's you know something that people can read and then go and practice. Uh, you can see probably on your screen that Les is with us too. So yes, I see him. Hi, man. Hi, nice to meet you, Raymond. Actually, I'm just looking at your cover here. That's the part that actually I like the best. <laughs> that must have been a lot of to do. <laughs> It, um, yeah, it just has that feel. Like, like, uh, easygoing and casual um, and not so clinical as most coffee-related books or something yeah, yeah, tend to yeah. be. And I didn't want that because it it's, brings you away from the idea of what is speciality coffee is. It's kind of like casual thing, you know. You're kind of easygoing. You, you talk about things. And, and most important is to bring the information, not just to show the fancy stuff, you know, behind that. Yeah. And then sometimes uh, it's as simple as just asking the question, well, how's it taste? Right? And, mm -hmm. and I think that's what sort of set coffee back because this fascination of making it a, you know, becoming pseudoscientists. Yeah. Right? And again, it, I, I, I sort of, I want to, Sometimes I just want to get away from the word science because I, I want to call it a discipline because it is a discipline, right? But I think science word, even though we all believe in the, the methodology of science, right, and, and the principles of science, um, when we're talking about um, something as complicated as taste, they, like um, we argue this all the time, I think that there is an artificial tongue that they've made and it can taste about like 10 things or something like that or 20 things right well we can taste you know hundreds of thousands of things right and and so so technology isn't anywhere near the the, the smell and taste uh, organs of the human body right now yeah absolutely it's, yeah so i think that we we often forget that and worry about what the tds meter says right and that's mm -hmm. part of, i like about your book when um mm -hmm. i think i think it was in a forum where someone was questioning you about TDS or something like that, and I think, um, or no, it's in your book actually, where you where you kind of don't really address um, specifics, right? As far as um, yeah, yeah. If I remember TDS. correctly, yeah, I think I wrote something about it. We, we didn't use a lot of TDS measurements in our everyday kind of uh, roasting development processes. Right. We used it rather, you know, when we we based everything on the taste and the sensation and how readily we are willing to drink it. Right. Um, and if we are drinking coffee that we are noticing how we drink, or we just suddenly, oh, oops, where is my coffee in a cup, you know? <laughs> because when it's right. gone, something like that, you know, you know, it's, it's probably tasty because you automatically just like drank it all away because you just like, your body just wanted to have it. Right, mm -hmm. and, um, and but, but we did some occasionally some TDS tests just to kind of understand where yeah, we are. Yeah, and that's a, it's, it's a benchmark, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, kind of comparing what others do and, and understanding some kind of that, but we didn't use the TDS to tell us how the coffee should be brewed or roasted or taste. You know, we, everything was about the taste because when you think about customers on the street, you know, they don't care about your tedious number or nothing, <laughs> right? No. They take care of just like tasty coffee, that's it. <laughs> you know, it's like... Yeah, so I, yeah. I think what Les is referring to is in the end of the book, right? Where you're talking about um, that coffee should make you salivate, right? Yeah, 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 I mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, and that's where you're talking about the TDS as well, where, where you're, you're saying, yeah, you used it to... Um, I guess keep an eye on your competitors in a sense to make sure like you guys were knowing what they were doing and what was happening in the world of, of yeah it, it, yeah it, it was like uh, just to understand where they are with their kind of what it's saying and where they are on the numbers and where we are what we compared what we do you know because we did anyway what we believed in right yeah. and right. then we just like use these numbers to compare okay if they use that as a measurement of something of something quality or whatever then we okay let's try it out and see where we stand compared to that what they are telling right and um 
and and yeah, that that's that's about it. Where we use the uh, TDS. I guess in some ways, doing that would give you like a bird's eye view of that company's philosophy, right? Like you would know, like oh, they're going in a certain direction. Like, would you ever? Would you guys think that that was important? Like knowing that they're more a fourth waiver or a second waiver or any of that sort of stuff. You know, I personally never really um, uh, watched like try to describe people by the waves or something. I just like, uh, like, okay, they roast. I, I knew that in Europe, like Nordics were usually roasting really light, like super light roasts. I know some yeah. Germans started to like newcomers started to roast lighter. And then little by little, all the other kind of like UK and they started to go lighter as well, specialty ones. And, uh, but um, uh, yes, I, I I, I never kind of like describe them as a, like first, like second, third or fourth waivers. We just like, okay, this is what they do because this is probably they, like, we looked into the background of their, of their culture as well uh, and where they're coming from and what is, what is going on there. And of course, for, um, uh, if, if I look at the, um, our local kind of culture, of course, people are used to drink darker coffees, but, uh, but I, I didn't kind of, um, I, I personally didn't like those really light ones because they were kind of, uh, they had some, um, not bitterness, but you know, when it's a little bit too raw, it, it's kind of um, um, acrid or something like it. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't like fully developed, you know, you, you could feel there's not enough sweetness in it, you know, because you could have actually roast the same coffee and have much more sweeter and rounder taste in it. Yes. It just was like what, what we, uh, we just roasted what we <laughs> what we liked and uh, we we believed in and and let everyone else to do what they what they do mm -hmm.